welcome to the podcast for when the curves line up for September 14, 2023. Please see the article that includes diagrams of today's events on the website. Text by Jeffrey L. Hunt. In Chicago, sunrise occurs at 6.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time followed by sunset at 7.02 p.m. A month from today, October 14, the moon's shadow races across the western hemisphere, first crossing the Oregon shoreline. The eastward-bound shadow moves across Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas before crossing the Gulf of Mexico to meet the Yucatan Peninsula. The track parallels the coast of Central America, crossing into South America at Colombia, then making a hard eastward turn across Brazil to meet the Atlantic Ocean. Sky watchers in the shadow's path see an annular eclipse, meaning ring, today commonly known as a ring of fire eclipse. Such eclipses occur when the moon is near its most distant point from Earth, called apogee, so that the lunar disk is not large enough to fully cover the sun. At the eclipse's peak, a ring, or annulus of light surrounds the moon. The eclipse occurs about three and one half days after the moon is at this far point. Sky watchers outside the main shadow experience a partial eclipse, depending on their distance from the shadow. For sky watchers in Chicago, the moon covers 54% of the sun, while 85% is covered from Phoenix. This eclipse is a precursor to the April 8, 2024, total solar eclipse that is visible across a large swath of North America. Historical weather is not promising for a clear day, although April 8, 2023, was clear across a large part of the eclipse path at eclipse time. Next year's eclipse occurs less than one day after the moon is at perigee, the closest point to Earth. The moon is large enough to fully cover the solar disk to reveal the sun's corona. Here is today's planet forecast. In the morning sky, one hour before sunrise, bright Jupiter is high in the southwestern sky. The planet is retrograding, appearing to move westward compared to the starry background, 13.5 degrees to the lower left of Hamel, Aries' brightest star, and 11.2 degrees to the upper right of Menkar, the sea monster's nostril. The Pleiades star cluster, on Taurus' back, is over 16 degrees to the upper left of the planet. During the next several mornings, watch Jupiter move westward and cross an imaginary line from Hamel to Menkar, showing its westward retrograde direction. Farther eastward, brilliant Venus is over 20 degrees above the eastern horizon. The planet continues to rise three minutes earlier each morning compared to sunrise while it steps eastward against the starry background. This morning, the morning star is 17.0 degrees to the upper right of Regulus, meaning the prince, Leo's brightest star. Venus and Sirius, over 40 degrees to the right of the planet in the southeast, are about the same altitude, height above the horizon. While there is no future Venus-Sirius conjunction, the brightest planet and brightest star are in the eastern sky at the same altitude during this month. Seeing these two bright celestial bodies in the same general part of the sky is a striking event and worthy of an early morning look. Procyon, known as the little dog star, is above an imaginary line from Venus to Sirius. Its name means before the dog because it rises about 30 minutes before Sirius, the dog star, from the mid-northern latitudes. Procyon is the sixth brightest star visible from Chicago and similar latitudes, shining from a distance about 50% farther away than Sirius. Mercury rises 64 minutes before the sun. While still dim, the speedy planet is over 5 degrees above the eastern horizon at 30 minutes before sunup. It is 8.2 degrees to the lower left of Regulus. In two mornings, the planet moves to within 8.0 degrees of Regulus and it is visible in a slightly darker sky at 45 minutes before daybreak. It is heading toward its best morning appearance of the year. In the evening sky, Mars is slowly sliding into bright sunlight. The red planet is dimmer than expected. The last hurrah of its appearance is a difficult to see close grouping with the moon during bright twilight in two evenings. Saturn rises in the southeast, less than an hour before nightfall. By two hours after sunset, 
the ringed wonder is over 25 degrees above the southeast horizon. It is not as distinctly bright as Venus or Jupiter, but it outshines most stars this evening. Saturn is retrograding in front of Aquarius, 9.3 degrees to the upper right of Skate, meaning the leg, and 9.5 degrees to the right of Lambda Aquarii. A binocular might be needed to see the two stars. Saturn does not appear in the same field of view with them. Find Saturn and then move the binocular to the appropriate directions to see the stars. The star foam a lot, meaning the mouth of the southern fish, is about 20 degrees below Saturn and over 6 degrees above the horizon. At this hour, Topaz Arcturus, the second brightest star visible from mid-northern latitudes, is low in the western sky. The star and its constellation, Boötes that resembles a kite, are celestial symbols that seasonal change is imminent when they appear at this location during the evenings. The constellation is said to be chasing after the Big Bear, which is easily identified in the Big Dipper, the animal's brightest stars. The curved handle seems to point in Arcturus' direction. Arcturus is over one and one half times brighter than Saturn. Saturn is south before midnight and low in the west-southwest when Venus rises in the morning. Jupiter rises over two hours after sunset. It crosses the south cardinal direction over two hours before sunup and it is in the southwest during morning twilight tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Please read the articles at whenthecurveslineup.com.